Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering three names of Allah, uh, covering the aspects of knowing, of wisdom, and the all aware. Uh, and so these names are Al Alim, Al Khabir, and Al Alim Al Ghaib wa Shahada. Uh, so without further ado, inshallah, we begin. Bismillah. So concerning all awareness, sometimes it feels like the things that happen in this world or the occurrences of this world really defy what we understand of Allah's names and attributes. Uh, we may feel that, you know, Allah, although Allah is Al-Mujib, the one who responds, that our specific prayers may feel unanswered. Uh, we may see that Allah is Al-Adl but there's much injustice in the world. Uh, we may see that Allah is Ar-Rahim, but there's so much cruelty. There's so uh, much, you know, uh, lack of mercy uh, that is that is given, especially to those uh, who are, uh, you know, God-fearing and, and people who we, would, who we would say are uh, people of God. And so this is why it's really important to look at Allah's attributes and Allah's names holistically and wholly, and not to just divide them or split them up uh, and at the exclusion of all the other names. Uh, we might, we must need to understand the complementary nature that helps us to understand these names better and helps us at the end of the day achieve a, a, a greater sense of balance and an inner peace and tranquility uh, that, that previously probably would not have been the case if we just focus in, laser focus in on just one attribute, see something going counter to that, and then make that indicative of Allah rather than seeing that as part uh, of, of a myriad and beautiful, uh, you know, just kaleidoscope of attributes that are uh, that are of Allah and so much more, uh, and to be able to understand things within with respect to each of these. So with respect to perfect knowledge, uh, Allah is Al-Alim, the all-knowing that Allah knows what is, what could be, what can be, what was, and what could have been. Um, Allah is also Al-Khabir. This is uh, a name that has the root meaning to know, to be aware of the inner nature of something, and to be an expert due to that deep knowledge. Uh, that you're, you're not just familiar, you're not just, you know, uh, on a superficial level aware, but you are intimately know, uh, knowing of uh, whatever it may be, uh, if it's an object or if it's process or uh, other things that are there. Uh, this knowledge encompasses both inner and outer nature of things. Uh, so it's not that Allah just knows only our outward actions or that which we do here. Uh, as the Quran lifts up time and time again, Allah knows uh, what's in our hearts. Allah knows what's beneath the skin, what is uh, in our intentions, what's in our minds, uh, and, and, and not just that which we just express outwardly. And so these two names of Al-Alim, Al-Khabir, they encompass a knowledge of everything. And they're further emphasized in another name uh, of Al-Alim al wa shahada that is the one who is the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, the unseen and that which is seen. And so this name alerts us to the fact that there are things that are beyond our comprehension, that are uh, within, with our, beyond our limitations of our senses, uh, that we can't reach or we can't fathom or we can't, you know, come into contact with in some way, shape, or form, like in, in the same sense that we do in our world here. Um, so just to try and process and understand these things, these are things that are outside that realm. And uh, it's, it's, it's a realm that's beyond our access, but it's one that Allah is not just familiar with or aware of, but has a intimate knowledge of and also has dominion over that space. And so we sometimes feel that what's on the outside, um, that that which is on the outside and which we can see is all that is real and all that is there uh, that that matters. And, um, you know, what, what what really strikes us with this name is that all of the actually what what is all of the seen, but all of the unseen is just as important. So uh, when we think about the things that we do, the things about how we operate in life, we think that just what can be seen by other people, what can be done out here, that's the only thing that counts. But, but uh, as, as we know, in our tradition, what we do underneath, what we may think about what our uh, what, what, what our statements might be that other people might not hear or all these other things, they matter just as much. And that uh, whether we hide them or whether we make a manifest, Allah knows either or, either knows both because Allah is alim al-ghayba wa shahada. So 
uh, in, in these names as well, Allah is not just the most knowledgeable, Allah has the most wisdom. Uh, all knowing uh, is Allah, but also Allah is also all wise. Um, we, 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 we know probably from our experiences or people who we have come across who are very knowledgeable. They have uh, an immense amount of knowledge uh, that you know we, we may aspire to, but they might not be very wise and they may not be uh, ha ha possess as much wisdom. And on the other hand, you have folks who are very wise, but they may not be very knowledgeable um, of, of different things. And so what's interesting for Allah's sake is that Allah is not only the most knowledgeable or the source of knowledge, but Allah is also the same with wisdom, the most wise, but also the source of wisdom and does the proper thing in the proper way, in the proper time and in the proper place uh, as, as, as necessary. And, and like I said, because of our human faculties and our limitations, we can only uh, see certain things and see decisions and whatnot uh, within our personal framework and context. And it's a whole life's journey to try to, uh, to expand how we process different things, to appreciate it differently. And to see that Allah is the one who created these faculties. Allah is the one who brought all of this new existence. And Allah is uh, the one who is not just uh, aware of all this are knowledgeable, but it's wise uh, in, in concurrence with this. So it's really interesting that knowledge in, for Allah is, as it's lifted up, is concurrent with Allah's wisdom. It's not, uh, as I mentioned, one who knows that Allah is not just the one who knows all or do, uh, you know is aware of all, but Allah is the one who knows best. Allah is the one who's best aware of all that is happening. And so these names that we've lifted up cover every type of different type of knowledge. And part of having faith uh, in them is to have that certainty that Allah has commanded and ordained that which will benefit us and that which will bring us closer to Allah and has forbidden that which is harmful or will keep us distant from Allah. When we develop this trust in Allah's knowledge and wisdom, we know then uh, what Allah has decreed for us is undoubtedly then good for us. Uh, and what he has prohibited from us is something that's not just bad for us in a literal sense, but bad for us in, in, in that connection that we're gaining with Allah. So we want to pay attention to not just the externalities of our rituals and the things that we do here. That's absolutely important and we should keep doing those. But on the other hand, we need to be, uh, we need to be very cognizant, at least try to be mindful and introspective about that which is hidden, that which is hidden within our hearts, which within our thoughts, that no one else can truly know what it is, um, you know, for, 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 for better or worse, but Allah knows. As Al-Khabir, Allah knows these innermost secrets. And so there should be some level of congruence with respect to our internal state and how, we, uh, how, how we're kind of operating internally and our external state. But oftentimes we see this huge disconnect. People are doing so many great things externally. Um, you know, they, they may be very cognizant of other people's needs and may be doing all these sorts of stuffs. Um, and on the inside, uh, when they're in private, uh, the, the script flips in a sense and, and they don't uh, practice what they preach. And so it's a very, um, very, very significant thing we should take heed of that uh, when we when we think about these names, uh, we, we, we think and we know that Allah is the one who's not just watching or protecting, but Allah is all aware um, of what we do and that which we show and what we don't show. So how do we live with these names? Um, so we want to first and foremost, remember that what is Right here, what we can see with our physical limitations and our eyes and feel with our hands and uh, sense throughout this world, this is not the uh, end of existence. You know, this is not all that there is. I want to remember that along with what we uh, have and what we can see, there's a complement of what we don't see. Um, and it's very interesting that in our tradition, we, uh, we, we, we do certain things to try to uh, kind of, you know, help manage that which is unseen. We, we give charity to avert cal uh, calamities. We, uh, you know, uh, also see that it decreases our wealth, but it uh, increases benefits in other spaces that uh, we, we, we want our best to try and think well of Allah. We don't just think of Allah as uh, an, an entity or uh, a God who we just serve out of just complete fear and just, you know, trying to get our slate clean because we need to check off certain boxes, but to think well of Allah, to know Allah, uh, and know that Allah knows you as much as you may feel like you know Allah or don't know Allah. Allah knows you very well. Allah uh, was, you know, in, in in a sense, it, as we showed in the uh, in the Quran, deeply involved in the creation of humanity uh, with respect to its nurturing and adaptation and 
uh, growing it. And, and so it's very important to see Allah is very connected to us. And so with respect to that, apart from thinking well of Allah, we want to be humble. We want to increase our knowledge of Allah. We want to find Allah to be that source of not just knowledge, but the source of wisdom. Uh, and we want to go forth and put our leg forward and seek it. So we want to know uh, ourselves, know uh, how, who are we below what society has maybe crafted us to be or, or some of our defaults that are now there. What, what's underneath all these layers? So um, work on our knowledge of God, but work on ourselves in a sense um, and, and, and to uh, work on our heart above all else. And so when we understand the inner meanings of our outer actions and uh when when we when we you know get in sync with respect to what's on the external what's on the internal we start to connect to allah and to see the significance of why allah is uh, all aware but also the the reward for that in a sense of being in tune um so we want to understand the inner meanings of our outer actions but also uh one of the reasons that we don't connect with respect to sometimes our outer actions that are especially ibadat or worship uh, or rituals, um, you know, we, we focus on the form a lot of times at the exclusion of the spirit and not, uh, not, not on the inner, but we focus on the outer. Uh, think about fasting as well, that we're focused so much on just the hours that we start our fast and then we break our fast, but we don't think about that co concept of uh, developing God consciousness. We don't think about any of the other blessings that are lifted up with fasting. So what I want us to take away from this is that when you Think about your inner actions that you're, you're thinking about your actions that you do, your your worship, your charity, all of these things. Think about the inner meanings to each of that, and think about what is driving you to do that. Are you just doing it because this is what uh, your mom or dad taught you, or this is just something that you know, you were told just do all these deeds? Um, and what does it feel like? Do you feel like you're getting closer to Allah because of your the deeds that you do, or? because of the situations that you're in, or do you feel not so much connected? And this is a good point for us to try and, uh, you know, reevaluate what our relationship is with the law. As we've mentioned time and time again, if it's not okay, that's okay. Um, there, we can always improve and Ramadan is the time to improve that, inshallah. So uh, with, uh, we'll close with this and we ask a lot to not just uh, be al-alim, uh, or Al Khabir or Alim Al Ghayb wa Shahada for us and to continue to be that for us, but to help us become aware as well, to help us become wise, uh, to help us uh, know that which we did not know previously, so that we may correct the path that we are on, so that we may truly learn how we can reconnect with Allah. Until next time, then, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.